emodels.co.uk. Make something awesome. It's Fox from Model Making Guru here. Hello, hello, welcome back to part six. Six of our build of the MPC 148 scale 22 inch Eagle Transporter from Space 1999. <sighs> Still not got that shorter. Yes, hello, welcome to part six. It's been a bit of a while since we did the last episode. My apologies. Uh, I had to get the big Master Chief build out of the way. I was on a kind of a deadline with that, so that's been done now. It's all finished. So we're back on with the Eagle. Yes. Now, if you remember in the last episode, we got up to finishing the frame around the two pods. Uh, these aren't glued on. These are just loosely fixed to keep them safe. So we did these parts. Uh, we have built a test spine that goes on the back. <laughs> Quite big. Uh, and that's where we'd kind of finished. Oh, we've also done all the construction on the schnoz, which because of the white balance just looks black as night. That's all finished now and done. So that's all done and ready. That can go to one side, that's just waiting for paintage. There's a few bits to glue on, but that's later on. <sighs> so yes, we've done all that. Built the two pods, built the spine, built the, the, the command module. The next step, I've kind of gone ahead a couple of steps because they weren't very interesting to watch anyway. Um, I've built the four pods, shoulder pods, to, into which the feet goes. And I haven't shown, I didn't show building these because they're not hard, it's just a box. You're just making a box. You do though, however, I will say, in the instructions, let me get the instructions, let me fold them to the relevant page. Hang on, hang on, folding. God, I hate these kind of instructions. Can't you just get a book? Ugh. Hang on, I'm folding. Where's the, hang on. Where's the, Ugh. I've lost where, there we go. So I will say, when you build these, um, there's a very specific way in which you build them. You have two starboard and two port, front and rear, and they're not symmetrical, they're chiral. They have to go on the right way round and at the right point. So there is a handy guide in the instructions here as to which panel goes where on which pod, on which shoulder pod. And this is a view from above, so you can see the orientation of all the parts, like on this piece here. On the rear starboard, the little circle needs to be on that side. On the rear port, it needs to be on the other side. And it all relates to where these arms are as well. So, And the arms are set inside, not outside. So I've actually gone ahead and built those. Uh, I've marked them as well so I know which of which. That's the front starboard. That's the rear starboard, like that. And then you have front port and rear port, like that. And again, these arms are on the inside edge. So these basically just slot in two. Might not be the right one, but they just slot in like that. That's how they attach to the pods. Now what I'm going to do when I finish this build, I'm not going to glue these in. Uh, because I want to be able to transport this. So what I'll do is when I transport it, take it back to your models, I can take these out. So I've built these. Uh, what else have we done? I have gone ahead and done the basic foot assembly. You can see here it consists of two major parts and I'll take you through it. We have the actual foot itself, which is just a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pieces. And the only reason I didn't show this is again, it's not very interesting. You just put the base and the foot together. You put these two side parts in here 
I'll use this as a pointer stick. These two side plates go in. This is just two pieces that just fit together without glue. And then you have this top pit, which is two pieces stuck together. Um, I found you can actually put these two side plates in, this one and this one, without gluing them. Uh, and it's better if you don't, because then you have to slide this in. It's a little bit fiddly to get these to go in here and here, but it does work. And getting this in without stressing it and snapping it is quite tricky. You will sweat a little bit, but it will go. Just be really super gentle when you put this hinge together. It's just two pieces that snap together, a bit like a Bandai kit. But I didn't glue these in, they're a super tight fit anyway. So you do that. Uh, I've actually got myself some little cocking tail sticks just to hold them in so that when I come to spray it, I can get paint everywhere. And I'll have to touch up around the edges of these hinges, but that's fine. So I've got four of those. Uh, I've also built the bit that goes inside, and this is quite simple. It's just one piece, one plastic piece, and the metal spring, which you super glue in place. You super glue the spring into place just so it sits. And what will happen is that will go inside here and provide a spring for the foot like that and then this will go through the foot thusly and be glued into the base so what you basically have is that will be there this will be glued to the bottom of the pod so the only part that actually moves really is this this part here so this this piece will be static and this bit will move and it won't move much, which is when you put it when you put it down, it'll just kind of go chunk like that. So you get that effect. Um, I've used, as I've said in the previous episodes, these aren't the springs from the kit. These were very kindly sent to me. Uh, these are replacement springs. Uh, the springs that come with the kit are absolutely fine. They're just a little bit stiff. So you might find the legs don't really move. These are third party ones and they're a little, little thinner and more springy. So it should have more sproin to it. So we've done them. So, what is next? So I didn't film those bits because it wasn't particularly hard and it wasn't interesting. I'm trying to just show you the bits where you want to pay attention um, because the rest of the build is fairly straightforward. I also built uh, these bulbous pods for the back engines and I built balls, balls. It's just two pieces glued together, same with that. And I filled the, filled the gaps with sprue glue, sprue glue and sanded them down. These you don't need to fill the gaps because there's like a ridge around the edge and that fills itself perfectly. So there you go. So, what's next? Next is the engines at the back. And what I've done is I've got myself all the relevant parts to build the engines. Uh, basically, we're gonna build the whole engine part except the bells, because they'll go on last. So I've gone ahead and got all the parts off the sprues. That's what all these are for. And this is the bit I'm kind of like, oh, because it looks super, super fiddly. So I wouldn't be surprised if this whole episode is just building the framework for the engines. So here, yeah. Anyway, let me go and clear this workbench off and get everything ready and we'll crack on with that. Okay, right, so the first step is step 21 and 22. 21 is to build these parts here that go here and 22 is to build the back end. Uh, now I've got all the different parts in different containers. So I've got all the parts here. I've got the bits for step 22 in here I've got the bits for step 23 in here and I'm just keeping them separate because 22 and 23 have both have four rods uh, that you have to put in place and they're they're different but they're easy enough to mistake so I've kept them all separate just to be safe now uh, welcome back to the glass cutting uh, board you remember in the last episode we used a glass cutting board this is so I get a perfectly flat surface it's just a normal chopping board it just happens to be made of glass my desk isn't perfectly you know, flat and level, so I don't want to get wonky things. So, step 21. Let's do step 21. This should be fairly straightforward. <laughs> you always say that. Literally, you have this piece here, and you have this piece here, uh, which are parts N65 and N72. There's two of each, and you do this twice. Uh, and all you're doing is you're putting this underneath and threading it through. Yeah, somehow. If I can get my sausage hands to work there's a little thing there that clicks in and it's going to go like that now the diagram on the instructions is a little bit confusing it doesn't really say say how that goes in so i had to look at this and i had to use this as reference this part here so use this as your reference that's the way it needs to go it needs to go on the outside and then loop underneath I need two of these so let's get this done we've got our tamiya extra thins and what we'll do is we'll do a little touch of glue first 
just on the little nobble there just to make sure it's lined up we will thread this through it's quite tricky because it's not easy to get your hands in there we'll thread that through and give it a second make sure just visually check and make sure it's all fairly straight and true it probably won't be my big nightmare with this is when you look at the instructions I'm just going to touch the glue to the edge there and what I'm also going to do is touch some glue to here and here just to give some extra and then just again visually check and make sure it's all straight yeah the, the thing that's given me the collie wobbles with this particular part of the build is there's like three different sections you need to build all separately and then you have to put them together and you have to hope they all line up and then you have to try and get the engines in which is looks like it's gonna be hard enough in of itself and if something doesn't line up <laughs> so yes we're going to give that a go now you notice here I haven't filled in these eject pin marks I'm not really gonna bother you're not hardly gonna see them anyway because it's gonna be on the inside uh, of the thing so you're not really gonna see them and if you do there'll be pipe work and stuff over the top so I'm not really too fussed with those with any model build you can go the whole hog and cover up every single eject pin mark and every bit of thing I mean obviously you get rid of all the flash and everything else the seam lines on the tubes and stuff but when it comes to eject pin marks you could spend all day doing it but I will tell you because of all the tubes in this kit see I've got to try and figure out somewhere to stand this now and it's there's nowhere to stand it without it moving um, let me find a piece of foam I'll just jam it into a piece of foam upright so it stands up um, yes this let's just say this kit is maximum eagle there's maximum sanding on this kit and, and getting rid of seam lines so trust me you will get to the point of ennui with it you will get to the point of like oh god I can't do any more sanding on these you do get to the point of tedium because there's so many tubes that you need to scrape off seam lines get rid of eject pin marks especially on things like the spine and the, the framework around the pods it gets quite tiresome so there's absolutely nothing wrong with leaving things like eject pin marks and so on where you're probably not going to see them i have no doubt that i'll come and put it all together and find out oh, actually you can see them all in which case arse but you know there's, there's nothing wrong at all with leaving the old one here and there because there are some things you're never going to see and although it's a, a point of pride to get everything done nobody's going to tell you off if you don't it's all about having fun at the end of the day this hobby is not all about making a museum quality piece display piece that's going to be like you know the best thing ever that's one of your goals perhaps you can make that your goal but sometimes it's just about having fun and enjoying yourself and if you see a bit that's like oh, i can't do that i don't want to have to clean that up don't don't worry about it you don't have to be a professional model maker all the time I mean there are some gumpla kits I get the gumpla kit and I don't even paint it I just do some weathering I snap it together and weather it and that's your lot just because sometimes I want to have fun so that's that done that's step 21 <sighs> I'll put that up I'm standing up in a piece of foam so it stands up like this I'm not putting it down because there's nowhere to lay it so I'm going to stand that on my piece of foam that's step 21 well, now on to step 22 22 I can't find a hole in me well, there we are step 22 right where's my bits for step 22 but now step 22 now you have to pay attention on this bit I'll show you the destructions I put the lid on my glue first because I don't want to do a Tony yeah we've all done that step 22 you have this back piece here the frame this is the bit that glues onto the main fuselage of the ship and these four rods and if you pay attention to the instructions they have these little detents and the little indents they need to be lined up in exactly the right way now they make your job easy because the little tabs that go into the holes they probably won't come out on camera are not perfectly round they're kind of half circles so they'll only go in one way and you need to get them into i think is it these four these four holes so pay attention the detents are quite subtle you can see you probably might not even see it. it's like there it's not as obvious as it is actually on the instructions but they have the little hole so it doesn't show on the instructions which end the hole needs to go at which is interesting however 
those are half circles those are full circles so you know that that for example needs to go in which way uh, that way because it fits in the half circle hole there and the detent is here Sorry about the jump cut there, I got confused with myself and had to figure out how to do this. The instructions are a little vague on this step. I mentioned the detent there, it doesn't show you where the detent is on the bottom ones, but I figured it out. So, let's get this done. So we take our little half circle one, it also shows on the instructions by the way, be aware this is wrong. It shows the ones at this end as half circles, they're not, they're actual full circles. And so are the receiving holes on the other piece of frame that this goes into. So ignore that bit, it's a bit wrong. So we're gonna put a little touch of glue in there and we're going to get this one in, half circle end, that way. And this one there, put this on the camera. Put that in there like that. And what you'll see is you've got your two detents there pointing up and out. I can't really hold them because they're not going to stay in place. It's the same on the bottom. Uh, it doesn't matter which one you use. I, this is why I got confused because it didn't really give you much information. But it doesn't matter which one you use on the of these. They're all identical. So you can use any one at any point. Just make sure they're all lined up right. So that needs to go in there. And what you'll have on the bottom is the detent will face downwards and inwards and on the top it will face upwards and inwards. Now this is where the challenge with these parts comes because as you can see there's nothing to line these up to. They're just sticking out so they could be wonky so I need to work fast and get the next bit done to then assemble everything and I've got, if I assemble everything quickly enough I've got some movement in these parts to conjiggle everything together. So let's go on to the next bit. Okay, for the next step, I'm going to deviate away from the order the instructions say to do it in. You're supposed to glue these rods into here like this. However, there's no way I can support these rods at an angle. So what I'm going to do is glue these side pieces in first. And this is how I'm going to try and do it. I don't know if it'll work, but it might do. It might do. So let's get this piece here. Get some glue in there. And we shall get some glue on that just for extra safety and security. Get this piece in here. I think that goes in there. Yep, again, the instructions are not 100% clear, but these parts will quite happily sit upright. So that's one. Let's do the other one, uh, which needs to be an exact mirror. So it needs to be that way. Does it? Have I done that right? No, no. Got that the right way. This one needs to be that way. It's very confusing, I'll tell you that for nothing. That goes there. Ooh, this is on the wrong way around. This piece here. So we're gonna have to somehow very gently remove that and turn it around because it needs to go that way. This is why you need to pay attention to what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. Let's just get this on, get it on. But this is why I like to work fast with this extra thin glue because it does give you enough time to take things apart. That's why you don't want to glue a bit and leave it overnight. The instructions say leave these things hanging around overnight, but you don't want to do that really because you might need to go back and change something around. So that goes th there. Let's put some more glue on there. I might need to sand the part down a little bit just to get rid of the glue marks, but that's no biggie. But this is why we do this. We always say, we make the mistakes. This is me, Tony and Ted. We make the mistakes, so you don't have to. So make sure that's in place. Got a fingerprint on there, but a bit of glue over the top will get rid of it. Okay, so that goes that way. That goes that way. Okay, that's cool. This one goes. You have this bar on the outside, basically. So this one should go in this way and should 
look like that. Yes, so that one's correct. It's this dog leg here on this piece that I had in the wrong place. I had this dog leg at this end and that was wrong. That's where I'd gone wrong. That's how I spotted it. So let's get some more glue in here. Apologies if this seems a bit chaotic. It is. Put that in there and do the same on this side. Bit of glue. But you know, I'm not a professional. But I have learned with this kit, you can't just take your time. Uh, unfortunately, you can't take your time and let things set. And apologies if my head keeps coming in shot. You can't let things set because if you do, you're knackered if you make a mistake or you can't make any adjustments. So that needs to be a simple L turn. Dog leg on this side. That looks about right to me. Jolly good. Now, this is where you put in these crossbars, and these crossbars are supposed to kind of go like, hard to say, they come and go in like that, come out, but they're hard to put in. So what I'm gonna do is see if I can get this together now and then put those bits in afterwards. So let's just get these in. These go into the middle bits. Now, I know you're seeing it from above, so apologies. In fact, let me move the camera, let me move the camera. Right, there you go, that's a better camera angle. So what we need to do is get this piece in here, like this, you see? Now this needs to go in, there's no specific way it needs to go in. No, cool. So this needs to go in here. Now I know this is even worse for the camera because now you've got my hand in the way. This needs to go in here, shaky hand, shaky hand. And because I've still got some play with those, with the glue, I can wiggle it around. So it needs to go in there. And it doesn't. Okay. <sighs> right, let's try that again. This needs to go in here. Like that. These need to go into these parts. It's a spine all over again, isn't it? I can see it. Mmm. <gasps> Marge Simpson. Right, so that needs to go in there, that needs to go in there. That goes in there. That goes in, that's off to the sides, that needs to come here. They need to go in there. And apologies, all my hands are in the way now, so I know you can't see what's going on. No, you need to go back up there. Wow, this is so fiddly. This is super, super fiddly. It's more fiddle than you can handle. Tweezers. Tweezers are required. There we go, that's in. That's in. Those are in. Whew, right, so we've got that in. And what I can do is very gently and very carefully apply some gluings just to get a bit of a bond going on, just to reinforce everything. Uh, like that. Again, apologies, my hand's in totally the wrong place. Just a touch for the moment, because I can go back and reinforce this later. And I know it's not squished together, but what I need to do now is get these rods in. Uh, and you have half circles on this end and full circles on the other end. So, that needs to go there like that. And then pops into everything coming apart. Fantastic. I hate this kit, I really do. I don't really. <laughs> right, so let's get that there. You stay there. So that's the, it's actually hard to see on these which is the half circle bit. But you'll know because it won't fit together. So that's the half circle bit that goes there. And it needs to go in. I've got these in the. Nope, hello, wrong hole. 
do you know this is where the instructions struggle a bit because they're not 100% specific there are outer holes and inner holes these four bars I'm doing this off camera these four bars need to go on the outer holes which is probably why I was struggling come on out you come I think it's going to come out now, isn't it? There we go, thought it would. These four bars need to go on the outer holes. Oh, this is the worst. Right, get in there. You get in there. This is really hard to do with the camera in the way. I do apologise. You get in there. These two need to go in there. there go. Yep, lovely, lovely. Right, so you might not see on camera, but there's four holes on the corner of the square in the middle and there's four holes on the outside of that. There, they need to go in. Just gonna re-glue them. I had them on the inside holes, which is why I was struggling a bit. But I'm not afraid to show you me struggling because it's giving you information as to when you come to build it. If you can see where I've tripped up and made a few goofs, then it just helps your building experience a little bit. And I'm not going to pretend this is easy. It's not difficult, but it's fiddly. <sighs> right, so now we need to do the cross members. So, I hope I've got this right anyway. So, you have a half circle one at this end. Uh, and it's really hard to see which the half circle bit is. I think it's that one so that needs to go in there and then it needs to feed into the bit in the middle so it might be easier to do the bit in there possibly this is where it could all go horribly wrong tweezer time just go in there and then slot in there okay that's fine so let's try that in there and slot it's not going to slot in there is it in there and then slot in there, there we go, it's one almost in, there, so if I can get some glue on that, now it's all a bit loose and there's little gaps, but I can bring it all together, I hope when I've got all the rods in I can compress it all, but for now I'll just leave it there sitting there, so this bit's glued in, that bit's loose, but that's fine. So again, we have this bit here in this end and that bit there in that end. So it needs to go there. I hope this is all on camera. It is possibly the worst angle I could show you this at. So that goes in there like that. But because I've loosely glued things and not let it set for a while, I've got some, ugh, I've got some play to move things around. Let's get some glue in there. Some glue on that end. And this is why I love this extra thin because you can do this. I do appreciate this whole episode is probably gonna be this. So yeah, sorry about that. That goes in there like that. It's not gonna go in because it's not long enough. You schwein, schweinhund. Uh. Come on, you can do it. In you go. There we go. There we go. Almost there we go. Okay, there we go. I can go in there. I can see where it needs to go. So it can go in there like that. Go on, you can do it. Without pulling everything else apart. It's hard to grab with these tweezers. So that can go in there. Ooh, getting there. Bit of glue on those. Okay, that's those two. I will have to do some compression in a minute when I've got all these four in just to squish it all together. This is where I do all this and then realise I've missed something out. That would be torture. Ah. So same for these two. 
I'll speed this biz up now because you've just seen me do this twice. Right, so yeah, finally done. Uh, that's all in. So just to recap, in case you fast forwarded through all that torture, because it was torture. Um, basically, I found it easier to skip the instructions order. So in the instructions, it shows glue these rods in first to here. When you do these bits, they're never going to stay there. They're going to flop around. So do this bit, glue these to this, then put these together and then put these crossbars in. Um, you, you do get some wiggle room. As long as you're using something like Tamir Extra Thin that takes a while to cure and set, you're gonna be fine. I'm just gonna double check I've got everything the right way around. That goes out there, that goes up there. That comes up there. Okay, that looks cool. Yes, so as long as you <sighs> use Extra Thin, you've got a few moments to wiggle things around. Just need to make sure everything's straight. And true for the next step now the next step is putting on the big fuel tanks and I'm gonna do it now rather than wait because if you wait and this all glues in place and it's locked this may be a real struggle I can see this being a pain <sighs> right so let me pause so I can not have a massive file and we'll do the next bit okay the next bit is installing these the big fuel tanks or reactor tanks whatever they are uh, and this is quite simple or at least this one was you just have to slot these. I've not glued this one in yet. You have to slot them in and line up this tube with whatever tube is on the armature already. So let's have a look. So this one will go in here. I'm going to guess this will line up with that or that maybe. So let's find out. So what you do is you have a little dingle on the end here and you have this bit. This bit goes in here like this, you see. And you have to very gently just pull it apart the slightest amount and pop it in. There you go, that's in. And this is why it's good to use the extra thin so you've got some wiggle room. Is that in properly? Yep, and then you just rotate it round and it lines up with that. And because we've not, because this has still only been like glued for about half an hour, it's still got some wiggle room so I can move it around. This is why I was keen to get these straight, but you can move them around a little bit. Now, I'm not going to glue them just yet because I've got to put the other two in. Oh, this was the bit I was stressing about, and it's actually the easiest bit. <laughs> so this needs to go in there, and is going to line up with that. So you can see here, tube, do it on camera, tube, it's got a little step in it. There's a tube here. This needs to go in here like this, we'll see. Just ever so gently knock the camera, ever so gently pull it apart, to slot this in this is where it gets tricky now because this thing could all just come completely apart it is not impossible and uh, where's this there it is just get it in I'm being very gentle and sweating a bit there you go it's in and the tube lines up this has been the easiest bit so far so what I would say is get these first two assemblies done this bit and this bit straight away glue it all together into this armature and then if you can, give it about five minutes just to let everything set a bit more so you can pull it and push it and it won't all just fall apart. And so the last one is going to go, it's going to link with that one, I think, or this one. Let's find out, it's going to be this one, you can see there. So we need to put it in, gently pull it apart and slot it in. There we go, perfect. Right, so they are in. They just sit in here like that. So that was the easiest bit. I'm just going to push it down in case we've pulled anything apart, make sure everything's in firm. Yes, that was, the, that was the easiest bit. It was the bit I was dreading the most. So give it about five minutes or so between building the whole armature and then putting these in just so you can 
stretch it without everything just falling apart because you will get some flex. Don't glue it together. In the instructions, it often gives you a little clock symbol to say, leave it for a bit. Don't do that because if you glue all this together and it's all set rock hard, you've got no flexibility to pull it. Now, the next step, we need to do the balls. Balls. So these need to go. Uh, this needs to go on here like this, you see. How does this go on? Place assembly N20 onto ends of part N. And you see, basically, look at the instructions. You see what I'm dealing with here. It's a nightmare. It's like so confusing and complicated. It's like... A... So, yeah. So they're still rotating, but that's fine. So we need to... These have both got like... It's got two half holes and a big hole. Doesn't say whether it needs to go on the big hole. I'm going to guess the big hole it says it needs to go on here which is a half hole so that's going to go there okay so this round hole may go onto this round peg the other bit goes into there like that oh i see so that goes into there like that and then we need part n74 which is there's four tubes but there's only two types there's the dog leg which is n73 and there's two just slightly wiggly worms which is n74 and you can see they've got a step at one end and a, a blob at the other so this needs to go from here into there oh yeah so this basically goes from that hole in the end of the ball there into the hole at the side of the engine which is where you have to hope you've got everything the right way around and the engine's in the this is why i've not glued it I need to make sure everything's in the right place. So that goes in there, and then this should just slot in. Let's do it the way around. Let's do it the other way around. That should go in there, and that should, oh, I see, right, here we go. That goes in there. It's quite hard to do this with tweezers, because tweezers, let's get some grippy tweezers. <sighs> so, oh, hello, dropping. If it seems like I'm really disorganized, I completely am. Don't kid yourself. So this needs to go in here. And again, apologies for the lighting. Everything's in completely the wrong place. Right, so that needs to, it's quite tricky. It's to go in there, but it also needs to slot into that hole there, like that. So that you would have to glue into place. So that just sits like that. So what I might do is put some glue on this bit first, just to keep it in place. Just for a second or two. Make sure that's still lined up there. Yep, that's fine. Get some glue on here. Where that bit was. And get some glue on here. Now what I can do later on is come back and sand these little joints. If I can get a standing stick in there. Just to make them all nice and neat and tidy. There you go. Perfect. Little bit of wiggle. And that gets some glue out coming out from the hole. Oops, or just pops it apart completely. Brilliant. Hey, right, you see that? That was near supposed to happen. There we go. Oh, stop with the spinning. Right, so that goes on there like that. Everything else has moved. Fantastic. It's part of the fun, part of the challenge, part of the annoyance. Right, you're refusing to stay in place. There we go. That's better. Right, so he's in there. Whoop, glue. If there are little bits left over, that's probably covered up by primer anyway, so you'd be fine. This, because it's glued in, it'll stay there roughly, so I can stick him there. Get some glue on there. Some glue on there. Some glue around here, where the engine goes in. And then some glue on the back here to keep him in. I've got the shaky hands again today. Before you all start worrying, I've got some medical condition. It's just because I'm resting my wrist on the side of the table. Okay, so that is in. Spin him around a little bit because he's a bit wonky wonky. Bit of glue under that. And we are in. And with that, we are done. The butt end of this thing is built. 
Now I have to say, uh, I've read a lot of things online, people having a lot of problems with this part of the build. I've kind of been like putting it off a little bit. But I thought that the, the fuel tanks and stuff and the tubes were gonna be the real problem. They weren't, they went in like a dream, no problem. A lot of people have had trouble getting these in and all falling apart when they're trying to push it together. That was the easy bit. Uh, the tricky bit was the original pipe work, the framework it goes on. Uh, now I'm no expert, but I would say if you do it the way I did it, by doing these cross these cross pieces here, do these last and just jam them in, you probably have an easier time because the instructions do expect you to glue these cross pieces, these diagonals to this, like that, and expect them to stay in place. They're not. They're, and it's also hard to tell which is the half circle end and which is the circle end. So I would say, get the frame built first then like i did then glue those cross pieces in and you'll be fine uh, now that's going to do it for this episode uh, i'll just put it together so you can see what it might start to look like let's have a look see if i can do it without my space helmet on so i can't see what i'm doing uh, can i see no no yes no no yes no no i'm trying i'm very trying you start to get an idea, and it's loosely put together. You start to get an idea for this thing. It looks awesome. Cool. Uh, but that's going to do it for this episode. What I'll do, because we've not got a lot of building left to do before we need to start the painting, because I'm doing this in sub-assemblies. I'm not assembling the whole thing first. Uh, the next episode will probably be... I don't know if this is a short episode. I get the feeling this will be shorter than normal. Um, and we've only just done this one step. The next step is doing the passenger module, so we'll probably make that one episode. And then a few other bits and bobs which will make an episode. So we'll probably do some more shorter episodes until we get to the painting part. Just purely because I don't want you to be waiting weeks for the next episode while I'm building stuff and doing it all. I'd rather build a little bit and film it and bang you a 10 or 15 minute episode with that working more regularly. So you've got you've got something more regularly then. So it might be a few more short episodes before we get to that the big painting session. But we'll call it quits for this episode here. Uh, as always, I'd like to say thank you to my very good friends at emodels.co.uk. I'll get my words out. emodels.co.uk. Uh, who I'm filming this for, they're my sponsors. They very kindly provided this model, and this will be going back to them when it's finished. God damn it. I haven't got the storage space. I haven't got the cabinet space, so I'm not really fussed. But uh, yes, this will be going back to them. Do check out emodels.co.uk. It's an absolutely brilliant online web store. I think it's the best one in the UK. It's absolutely brilliant. Um, they don't just ship within the UK, obviously. You can check it out from abroad as well. Uh, they've got such a massive range of, of stuff. They've got kits, they've got books, they've got tools, paints, materials, magazines, guides. They've got RC stuff. They've got drones. They've got tons and tons of stuff for every kind of modelling. Uh, we always say, if they haven't got it, you don't need it. So if you go to the website and you're looking for something specific and it's not there, then there's two possibilities. One, it's just out of stock and it'll come back on the website when it's back in stock. So drop them an email and say, hey, is this coming back in stock? When will you have it? Uh, or it may be something they don't stock, but it doesn't mean they can't get it for you. Sometimes they can get you something even if it's not something they normally sell. So always worth, if you're looking for something and it's not on the website, drop them a line and just say, hey guys, I'm looking for X. Do you stock it? Can you get it? When's it back in stock? Or if you don't carry it, can you get it from one of your distributors? And more often than not, they'll be able to accommodate you because they really will look after you. So go and check them out and see what they've got. There's tons of stuff on there. A couple of bit of housekeeping things you might know already, but if you don't, uh, there is a new gallery section where you can upload pictures of your models that you've built. Uh, and you can rate other people's work and people can rate your work. On the first of every month, Ted and I will go into the gallery. We'll, we'll look at all the five star rated builds and we will pick one that we think is super awesome uh, and that person will win a sweet prize on the first of every month so uh, if you've got builds that you've already taken pictures of or if you haven't gone take some pictures get them uploaded we ask for say one picture per model we don't want like lots of pictures of the same model because just do one of each model. you can do as many pictures as you want but just try and make one per model uh, get it on there and spend some time reviewing other people's works karma will pay you back if you review lots of people's things they'll review yours they'll be more likely to review yours and we will pick the best what we think is our favorite at that time five star rated build so go and check it out it's the gallery section there's loads of good stuff on there um, you may have actually put stuff up on the Facebook page and you may find it suddenly in the gallery without you uploading it that's because we had to put a few in there to start it off so don't panic if you suddenly find your builds already up there it's like yeah we got that off the Facebook page but do go and check it out also, uh, we have to, you may not know this as well, but we have a new builder in the eModels video stable. Ant from Bashing Kits has joined myself, Ted and Tony as eModels builder. Uh, he is taking delivery of his first kit to be the build and that will be coming hopefully soon. 
So do stay tuned. Ant's a genius at doing tiny, 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 tiny 144 scale models. He does like little, he's part of hashtag team 144. He does tiny things. Now, I can, all I'm going to tell you is his next build is 1144 scale, but it's not necessarily tiny, but it is 1144 scale. So his videos should be coming along fairly soon. Stay tuned for those. He's, he's an awesome builder um, and you'll see a lot of good stuff from him. So he's coming. Uh, and last of all, as we mentioned in the last episode, I think there is now an office page as well where it's just everyday e-models guys will go in and they'll look at various kits or tools or magazines or anything they might think you might really like and they'll drop the price down sometimes by a fiver sometimes by 20 quid some kits have been dropped by 50 quid it's kind of random they'll drop it down by an amount some can be on there for a day some can be on there for several weeks or a month some might be on there just for a little bit so it's always worth whenever you go to the website check out the office section see what's in there it's not just stuff they can't get rid of there's a lot of good stuff in there. There's a lot of really nice kits and books and magazines and all kinds of things in there. So go and check it out. It changes daily. Everything's being updated. If you see something in there you really want and it's on offer, grab it because it may not be on offer for long and it changes all the time. But that's going to do us. Thank you so much for watching. Do take care of yourselves. Go make something awesome. Go be awesome. And until next time, adios amoebas. <laughs>